Hi, I'm GNT and today I'm going to take you through the front knee. Knees are most commonly used at close range but can be used for mid-range as well. They are usually an offensive movement disguised by throwing a combination or done from a clinch and when they land correctly they are a very devastating technique. Okay, so for the front knee there are three main angles to consider and that I will break down. They are directly forwards, upwards and diagonally which covers anything in between then. It's important to understand all of them as your opponent's position will dictate which one is most effective for each situation. Now we are going to start from our fighting stance and we're striking directly forwards with the knee. For this method it is key to turn your opposite foot out slightly and if you combine this simultaneously with doing the move it will add extra momentum and power to the strike. If you want to maximise the power you can also load the hips back first, add a step forwards before you strike or combine the two. Loading back does look funny, but it creates more distance so you can gain more momentum with the strike. When kneeing, you can keep the base leg's foot flat or go up onto the ball of the foot. Keeping it flat will give you a more stable base, so if you get hit at the same time as making the technique or meet a lot of momentum, it will be harder for them to sweep you and easier for you to maintain your balance. Whereas going up on the ball of the foot is considered faster and can give you that little extra range and height with the other methods. Both have their uses with the three angles, so my advice is to train both so you can use the correct method in the right situation. When striking, try not to lift or swing the knee up first and then turn the hips into the strike as there won't be as much distance to gain the acceleration and the knee will be weaker, causing little damage. Also, lifting the knee too high as you strike will mean the hip and your body weight is not behind the strike as much and the knee can even bend into yourself on impact. Instead, turn your hips outwards whilst thrusting your body weight into a direct strike to give you a strong, efficient knee. After the strike, pull the knee back and return to your stance as the move is usually done at close range and doing so will keep your distance from your opponent. You can land it in front as well and go to your opposite stance, but this is more for when it's used as a mid-range strike rather than a close one. For whichever one, make sure your hands are up as you will most likely still be in close range and you will need to be ready to defend against strikes from your opponent or to do another strike. Saying about guard, a lot of people bring their hands down as they strike for more thrust, but this will leave you vulnerable. Instead, I recommend bringing your arms out more and then take your elbows back and down slightly to create the thrust in motion. This way, your hands are up ready to defend or throw another strike. When making impact, try to strike with the upper shin and the hard part of the knee to cause maximum damage. Some styles will also strike with a thigh and it has its uses in different situations, so keep that in mind. As for target areas, aim for the ribs, liver or solar plexus. Other areas would depend on your opponent's position, so strike to vital areas that are on offer. You just don't want to scuff off of the area, so aim at a right angle to your target and it will be more effective. I recommend using the front knee when an opponent is stood upright and not leant forwards or in a clinch. As like I just mentioned, if I strike then, it will most likely scuff off of my opponent due to the angle. The diagonal knee would be better suited for that situation, maybe even the upward if the chin is on offer or the body is arced enough. You can also strike with the front knee off of the lead leg. Do this by stepping forwards with the back leg whilst pushing the hip back on the opposite side to load the knee and then strike. Or switch your stance. With both, keep the hands up afterwards so you are ready to defend or follow up after the strike. When stepping in, I recommend to throw a technique beforehand to cover you on the way in. Now for the upwards knee, I recommend going up onto the ball of the foot as it gives you more height and range with the technique. Staying flat footed means you may decelerate the technique as it gets close to the target or maybe not reach it altogether. As you strike, again you want to knee directly towards your target and have your weight behind the technique. With this one you will need to lean back slightly to create the upward angle efficiently. To do this, arc your back slightly to keep your body weight forwards so you don't lose balance when making impact. You want to use this version when the opponent's chin or body is on offer, whether that be timed as a strike or counter, or created by pulling an opponent down into one from a clinch. For the lead, transfer weight to the back leg and lift straight up. It will be weaker and doesn't look much, but knees are tough and even when catching an opponent with this, it can still cause significant damage. Now the last one, the diagonal or anything in between the other two, is a combination of the direct and upwards methods. With this, you still use forward thrust by opening your hips and keeping your body weight forwards, but you will also raise the knee at the same time to the angle you want to strike. Again, as you strike, keep the hands up, and when landing, especially forwards, be ready to follow up or defend. This version is great for striking into the body of your opponent when they are leant forwards, and like before, I recommend striking in at a right angle to the target so it is less likely for it to slide up or downwards when making impact. To strike with the lead, step in taking the hips back and then strike. 
or especially in a clinch, you can switch quickly to make it the back leg and fire it in. For any of these versions, when not in a clinch or a close proximity, cover the distance with a technique, step into range, or do it as a counter. And remember, if in a clinch or a grab, pull them into your strike as it will create the angle and cause a higher impact force as they are traveling into the strike. Okay, so by understanding all these methods, you can adapt to strike based on your opponent's position. This means you are more diverse and can cause the maximum damage for whatever position your opponent is in. Just remember to strike the target area at a right angle, and when you have drilled and are used to these three front knee methods, you will strike automatically, naturally making the correct decision. When you do have the knee to a high standard, try to do it in a combination, from a clinch, or from different movement and positions. This way you are ready to use the knee in any position it's possible to do so. This concludes my tutorial on the front knee. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. To support us by purchasing an official Team GNT t-shirt and follow me on my other social media. Thank you for your support. Team GNT. Peace.